Let's start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this virtual uh, lunchtime conference. I would like to ask you to please mute your microphones and to switch off your um, video so that the connection is better, please, throughout the presentation. Thank you very much. You can, if you have a question, please use the chat at the bottom of the WebEx. Um, we will address all questions at the end of the session. Please note that the session will be recorded and we will publish these afterwards on YouTube and on the Interinstitutional Community of Practice on Data Visualization. A few words on myself. My name is Beatriz Fernández Nebreda. I work in the Publications Office of the European Union, more concretely in the EU Open Data Portal. This is the single point of access to open data from EU institutions and agencies. So why are we here today? Last year, we organized a conference on data visualization for the public sector in Europe, EU Database. It got a huge attention and it was a very big success. So we decided to follow up with a series of mini sessions on specific topics to be able to have a little bit more time to dig into the subject. Our speaker today, Rafael Hor, will be able to share his insight of over 20 years experience in preparing graphics for newsrooms. Rafael is an infographics editor and partner at Prodigioso Volcan, a design and communication agency in Spain. For the last 20 years, he's been working in newspapers like El Mundo, El País and Sunday Times. Today, he will present a global perspective on the evolution of graphs used to explain news and he will focus both on very concrete examples and on some of the lessons learned from all these years. So with that, I would like to give the floor to Rafael. Thank you very much. Rafael? Hiya. Yeah. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can Thank hear you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. I do hope everyone is okay. And yeah, let's go on. Um, I would like to to share with you some kind of, some experiences in graphic uh, publishing from a journalist point of view. I mean, how do we work with data visualizations and how we work with graphics and what we want to do in a newsroom? Um, no? So we are going to talk about applications. We are going to talk about processes and some tips or some experiences that I, I would like. I think that could be very interesting. Uh, the speaking is going to to have this part, which is a great. We are going to run on create stories. We are going to talk about the big data, the small data to create these stories. How do we cover the five W's in journalism? And how to do it? Three lessons, tiny lessons, you know, and the tools to create the graphics. If we have time, a tiny history or evolution of the global graphic inside the newsroom. The people um, we do have now at this moment in the newsrooms uh, new roles. And we have data visualization specialists, we have data scientists, journalists, developers, graphic artists, and we work together. And something very interesting in these years is that there is a, technic a, a technical knowledge democratization in the newsroom, giving access for all the journalists, not only the infographic journalists that we used to have to work in a department, but to all the journalists, to online tools that honestly we didn't have before. So this is how I would like to share how we work to manage the data, to manage the resources, and which, which is the objective to all this effort. The first thing, the people remember the story. They, the people doesn't remember the data. So we have to build narratives. We have to build 
to build stories based in truthful data and accessible data, but create stories. So this is what we do with, when we do graphics in the, in the, in the news. Great story. Let's share a sample. Uh, in this case, we did a graphic to explain the Trump companies when he ran to the to the presidency of the, the United States. How we did it? First of all, we used to call we used to divide the data in cold versus hot data. The cold data for us is the information, the number, the data that is accessible for everyone. And the hot data is this data that is an exclusive. No one have it. Only, only we have access to that. So it's depending on which kind of data are we managing, we are going to create a story or another different story. So once we get access to the source, in this case, the document that they have, the, or every candidate have to present to become a president or run an election in the USA. And when, once we have access to the, to the source and to the data, we have to study all the, all the information we have, verify that it is true, prepare everything, this is a normal process, began to work with tiny data visualizations to look for a story in, inside these spreadsheets. And once we have it, we lay out, we have to make a layout of how are we going to tell? What we, do we want to tell? Following the five W's of who, where, when, what, and how, or how many. So we have to prioritize the message. We have to create a rhythm in the narrative, a rhythm, a musical uh, shit, shit in the, in the narrative. So we can, um, so we can uh, build a global narrative with a, with a structure, with a presentation, with the key events and with a final, so we we ensure that it works for the for the reader. Let's check. Bring it to work. This is the real page, and this is a newspaper publication where we are explaining in a network the composition of a company and the relation between different properties. So we began to create the story with this. What, who are we talking about? Where are the locations? This company. The composition of the of the incomes and the composition of the business of this company as well. The incomes. Simple table. Even more. The mortgages. The buildings. The, uh, the the position of the or in the company of the of the Donald Trump. So what we do basically is from the data we create a layout asking to the five W's, and in these five W's we create a story. Focus on the on the on the. I'm sorry for the for the sound. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Interrupts. So, if we follow one of the one very good practice to get into a graphic story is to go from big data data to small data. It means that I'm going to f just one second, please. Thank you. Um. It's going to make an annotation in the presentation. Fine. Well, in any case, we have a, a, a we have to take the big data 
into a small data. They want to make them affordable in a human stage, personal. So a good graph, a good practice to do a graphic story is to bring all the all this this kind of. I'm sorry, it doesn't work properly. Yeah. So in this case, for example, we have a graphic in where in where. Yeah, <laughs> I have to check. I have to close one moment. It's fine. That's one second. That's fine. That's fine, Rafael. That's okay. fine. Sorry. This is what, we have, what happens with uh, live sessions. Just bear with us for a second. It's going to show us into an interactive uh, dashboard. We tried before and it worked very well. So bear with us for one second. Thank you, Rafa. Sorry, work okay. from home is not easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> very human. Uh, okay. So, for example, in this case, we have been we have seen this graphic uh, to be, uh, showing the the global warming and the prediction and the provision for of the data. And yeah, we know we can understand this. It's fine. Also, uh, several politicians used to use it, and everyone is going to use it in a presentation. But it's different. I mean, everyone knows this graphic, but it's different, for example, if we go to the real data in our own city when you were born. I mean, you take the huge data, in this case, you put your home, your born city. In this case, in the year you were born, so it's say, okay, that was the temperature in your city. This is how it has evolved. And this is the prediction. And now this huge graphic about the global warming is close to me. So all the big data has been more, it's now small data for me. So now I can understand the story. So it's an example, a very good example of take the big data and put it into a small data close to the real. Another example, when we are talking about macroeconomics, big numbers or huge numbers, we say, okay, this is 1 million, 2 billions, things like that. Well, readers can say, okay, this is too much. But what is, what is too much for a reader, for a, for a, for a user of, of, a, of a news? Well, this is a tiny example. In this case, for example, you can compare how long does it take to a football player to earn your salary? Which means I, I, I hope you see it well. How long does it take to Tony Cross to earn two thousand euros? Fifteen minutes. So <laughs> it is very embarrassing. <laughs> but it's fine because what you have in here basically is that a huge number that maybe you, you could, you don't know the dimension, now you know what that's mean. Because we have taken the big data, the big macroeconomic data, and put it into a microeconomic scenario close to you, that you know what does it mean. You know how long does it take to earn this money to you. And now you know how fast someone like this can take, can earn the same amount the same amount. If we go to another example of these kind of things, if we take all a social economic or political uh, study, I mean graphics in data, and put it in your neighborhood, you will make them uh, very accessible and very comprehensive. So if we go for example in this case, uh, Last line, 
are going to go from one leg or to the other. So, in depending on the bus stop, the data is going to change in both or index like liberation or average age. So we make a narrative of based in data with the human touch of the bus stops. Now, this is the best, I think it's a very good exercise of sharing information based in data in a human dimension, very comprehensible. So that's, this is the latest, let's, let's, the, a very good example of uh, geographical location. I mean, we talk, for example, about the man, the Trump that um, won in, in Mexico, uh, the frontier between the USA and Mexico. But what does it mean when he say, okay, we're going to build a, a wall? Because for me, a wall is Pink Floyd uh, or Berlin Wall <laughs> or whatever. But I don't know what that means. In, well, if I take this, this data, this adjacent this a geogra geogra geographical data, and put it close to my, close to somewhere that is, that I can understand, this is what we are talking about. This is what we, 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 are, we are talking about. This is the real dimension of our world, of, of the news. So yeah, something that you cannot measure, now you, you can do it. And you know how huge is the length of this, of this item. So these are examples of taking, for me, of taking big data or numbers or big numbers and put it in a journalist perspective to make sure that you we engage our reader and they understand the story. So once we have been seen these examples, I would like to, to go to a very specific scam or diagram that we have in the newsroom to do it. I mean, who's going to do this and how? So we work following, we, 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 our job is to, to answer, to make, uh, to answer five W's. Where, when, how, who, and what. Okay, that's fine. But our team, is, and every year it's the smallest team, uh, we have a graphic department with graphic journalists and graphic artists. We have a newsroom with journalists and specialists. We have designers, web designers, print designers, mobile, and then we have the IT and the developers teams. Okay, so how can we make these teams answer these questions? Basically, in a, uh, since 10 years, I mean, 10 years ago or eight years ago, uh, we have a huge amount of applications to do it. Some of them are still in beta. Uh, some of them are going to disappear in a couple of years. It doesn't matter. We have a real good scenario of applications to create graphics. And depending on the technical skills, depending on the technical skills of, of the team, we're going to use one, one application or another one to answer the question that we want to answer. So, at the, so what we, we draw is a network a simple network where we can link, for example, the graphic department with 3D application to create, to create 3D recreation and explain what or how, how um, the, uh, some, something happens or something occurs. Or if we are going to create tiny graphics, we can put the newsroom. Our journalists can do it with a simple application like Data Wrapper and ask the question where in maps. So yeah, we create a, a very simple network that is alive. I mean, every time we have another new application, 
and sometimes some of the application disappear. Let me show you, for example, this is an example of a breaking news graphic. We are working in a breaking news graphic like a terrorist attack or like a catastrophe or like a tsunami, earthquake or whatever. Um, we used to work it or breaking news also or special event like royal weddings <laughs> in this case or like Olympic Games or World Cup or national elections. We used to focus all the effort in the graphic department. So the graphic department is going to have the main role in this case and they're going to use all the applications that they can. Also, com with combination of the, of the other department, but all the focus is going to be in the graphic department. But for tiny graphics, for simple statistic graphics like bar charts, line charts, uh, we try the newsroom to learn how to do them and give the tools to do them. So for these kind of things that are very, very simple and very easy to edit, we teach the, the, the newsroom, the journalists, to create their own graphic. We give them the application that we think we have tested and we think that it's very easy to use and to update for them to be free to create the graphics without have to ask to a graphic department to do it. So they earn time and to do things like this, very simple. And also they learn a very interesting thing that is they learn to edit the data. So once they know how the data has to be managed to create a graphic, they ask for the data properly. I mean, this the journalists uh, use it to, they didn't, they, they, they didn't use to, to ask for a correct format of the data few years ago. But now that they know how to do a graphic, they ask for the correct format. They are not going to, I mean, no PDF anymore, please. <laughs> so give, the, give the Excel file, give the, give the CSV file, but the journalists are going to ask for this format because they know that they need it to do the graphic with a simple training. And this is a very good point. In this case, for example, they edit the captions and edit the text in a spreadsheet in Carto to create a a, a route map of, it's a timeline of, of, of events uh, in a route map, which is very, very good. So they learn that they have new ways to edit the, the, the content. Or timelines like this, with timeline yes, so easy to use. So easy to use. So you can uh, just edit the caption in a Google spreadsheet and then create a timeline that is going to help you to tell a story or a background story. But they are not made by journal graphic journals. They are made by simple journals. Simple. You can see it here. Yeah. They're running a special cover of an event. I mean, I don't remember any graphic journalist to, to have to do this. It's made by journalists. It's good because they know how to manage the content in a Google spreadsheet. So in this case, the newsroom, for example, have tools like Flourish or Data Wrapper or Mafo News or the line or the timeline years or story map years to create and to answer questions themselves without asking anyone to do it. This is an example of how it can work uh, a collaboration, a cooperation between uh, departments. This is the a special event when where we, a journalist uh, in a train in the UK, uh, travel from the north to the south asking the people that get into in each stop about the Brexit. Brexit. So they made a very simple um, yeah, human report of the, of, the, of the Brexit. At the same time, we were updating the graphic 
in a training space. So we both work it together. We were updating on uh, each, each in each stop. We were updating the graphic with the content and with the this. It was made in Carto. Carto the it was called Carto the Bill before, and with the color the consequences of the, the with the pools the before the the breaks the Brexit and the interviews of the journalists in the train. So meanwhile she was doing the interviews in the train, we were updating the the same the, this graphic in a train in Spain. So they are only online tools that work very well. We tested and it didn't crash. So that's a good point. Just only to show you this, this example. Something that the newsroom learned with this, and we can work, we can work in team, and we must work in teams. I mean, for every single, uh, special event, like an election, or like the coronavirus now, or whatever, uh, we create teams multi uh, with different skills so we create, we ha we work we used to work together designers information graphic developers and editors as soon as the news as uh, the newsroom the journalists know something or have a tiny knowledge about graphics or about data this plan works very well and it, we are very fast to provide graphics so basically, we create internal teams, and then we have external help, if needed, like 3D artists or software providers, so we can publish in different devices. We, create, we can create long-form narratives, very easy. Remember, always asking, answer, trying to answer the, the five W questions. So remember, just to, just to finish this point, remember, first of all, create a story based in truthful data. Second, uh, link it to uh, know your, your technical skills and your team, and then link the story with the skills, with the tools. Honestly, we have seen change the, the tools every year. So the tool is not a problem. I think the problem is the story. We have to focus on create the story first and then look for the tool. But in this order, story, skills, and tools. Well, I would like to go to the next point with you. Uh, this is a very simple uh, lessons learned. I have three topics that, in, in my experience, I, I, I have learned working in in several graphic departments. The first one is that we have recurrent news. I mean, this is a deja vu. It's not matrix, but it could be in terms of we have recurrent news that are coming and things that are coming every year or every month or every two months. And we always go to the same source. We can make it automatically. It shouldn't uh, take us time. So one of the things is how to automatize the recurrent graphics. I mean, if we are talking about unemployment rates, and we are going to update this data daily or monthly, no one should be doing this graphic. They should be done automatically. So what we are preparing is a, is a, is a prototype, is a plan to create graphic without human interaction. Because based in our experience, I mean, based in the recurrent graphic that they are coming every month, every year, every couple of years. So yeah, this is something that is now happening. So we are the thing. The best, the best thing is write the story, and if it's a topic that we have published before, and we know the source, and we know where the data is. Let's do it automatically. So, uh, uh, apply machine learning, 
apply a couple of Java scripts and create a graphic without human interaction. This is a, something that we think it's very interesting to share. That's only to, it's a prototype for some point I work with uh, uh, unemployment rates or EPS or, or is very, very useful. The second thing is that when we talk about data and we talk about graphics, we believe that everything is true. But no, it's not. Information is persuasion. And graphic information is graphic persuasion. So something that we learn is that every time a politician or a speaker shows a graphic, it means that he or she wants to, to, to make us believe that everything is true. So every time we see a graphic, we are going to ask for the source. We need access to the source at any time. Because it's the only way to double check that the message is true. So I remember this PowerPoint. I'm sorry for sharing. I have this PowerPoint. And we went to a world based in someone telling you that his message was true because, and here is the graphic. So every time you see a graphic, like a journalist, ask for the source and try to double check the information. This is the simple statistic graphic. It's a picture, but he wanted us to go to a world as well with iron base it in a statistic graphic. We need the source. We need to check the information with that. This is the Bin Laden compound. All the newspapers in the world, from the New York Times to the LA Times to BBC, to the South China Morning Post, to El País, uh, um, we draw this building without asking anything. So, Every time someone is going to, or for example, the BP oil spill. In the BP oil spill, they provide us all the graphics to explain how they, they were going to sort, sort the situation. So every time a politician, or not a politician, or someone use a graphic, asks for the data. It's our duty to ask for the data, and the data must be accessible. So this is the second point. And the third point is keep it as simple as possible. And it's very difficult not to create for the people, for, for the community that used to work in data visualization, it's very difficult not to create a complex graphic. But we must understand our audience at any time. And we must understand that we have to, to do graphics uh, it's not mine, but it's very good comparison for Lisa and Bart Simpson at the same time. So our message should work with a different target at any time. If it's possible, it's very difficult, of course, but if it's possible, that could be brilliant. So as soon as we do the graphic simple, we can manage this. So oh, I think I'm running time. <laughs> uh, something that is very important for us. This is how we build stories with graphics, taking the big data to small data, make them human and a couple of things. But there's something very important, a bad graphic. When we make a mistake with a graphic, uh, it is very, very difficult to come back. No, it's it's very very difficult to to make them trust again in your news brand, in your message, in your policymaker, in your in your in the in the speaker, because it creates confusion, it creates reaction, and the mistrust is the is the worst point in this in this, in this point. So don't do a, try not to do a bad graphic, and if. We, if we, we know that we can do a bad graphic, it's much better not to do it, honestly. It's much better to stop 
before do a bad graph. All right, um, I'm going to run about on the tools that we used to, to work, and we have tested with some success sometimes. And the first thing we have to know is what we want to, to show. We could learn it, we could study it, or we could go to the web pages where we can <laughs> find a very helpful uh, tips. So for example, in this case, in this case is the, one of the best for me is the database visualization catalog in where you can, in a very simple way, you can select what do you want to show, comparison, proportional, or hierarchy. And if I want to see a comparison or proportion, it tells you which kind of graphic would be work very funny, which is very, I mean, it makes you time. So you say, okay, I'm going to use, for example, a bubble chart or a night, or, or nightingale rose chart, that is lovely. And, okay, and it asks, it tells you how to prepare the data and which tools are already online to do it. So it's very helpful, this kind of thing. So before create a graphic, I strongly recommend you can hear, or maybe the visual vocabulary of the Financial Times is very, very good, very accurate. It's just based in the graphic continuum, and they work very well together on the DVP as well with real examples. And then these sites, before do anything, go here, ask yourself what do you want to show, and they will probably help you to select the correct graphic to do it. So, for example, I'm going so fast. Because in applications, we found 227 database applications. They're not going to use them. Too much for us. So, I strongly recommend the application that we have already tested in the newsrooms, like, for example, Data Wrapper. Very, very, very easy to use. Uh, the journalists used to see the content, the, the results very easy, very fast. So they 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 engage with the application and they create more graphics. It works very well. It it provides graphs in responsive for mobiles and something that I don't know if we're going to to see after the coronavirus is that it provides you graphics to export to print. <laughs> like SVG, so it's very good for printing documents, dossiers, or, or publications. So it can provide you with things like this. This graphic has been made like, 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 uh, have been made by journalists, no graphic designers. Of course, what we do is create templates. So we sure we ensure that the colors are not a huge party. So everyone follows the, the colors, but it's fine. I mean, they have they are made by journalists. They can do also maps. The next application is Flourish. Very good. Very nice for the web. Good charts. It, it, you can create sun keys and you can create networks and 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 they work obviously they are responsive as well the only thing that it doesn't publish for the print so if you have to publish it in the print you have to support a static image and sometimes it does not have the nice resolution we would like to have to have for a publication but it works very well so these two applications are the tools that already most of the newspapers are using in the newsrooms and you can do for example this kind of sankeys Interactive sankeys, of course, it is understandable, but that you can understand it when you select it. Something very, very funny to work with is Onodo, is to create networks. Very funny to to show relationship between politicians or companies or events. Very good, and all 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 of these applications works more or less the same. You have a, an Excel file or a CSV file 
or a Google spreadsheet and you publish it or you copy and paste or you upload it and then you visualize it and make some kind of customize. Right? Yes, thank you. Sorry, Sorry about my pronunciation sometimes. Um, the row graphs is a very good application to create uh, diagrams and dendrograms and and uh, parallel coordinates graphics. They export SVG, so they are very good for editing. Or uh, if you work with an, a developer team, team, you can work with the SVG and the developers to create an interactive graphic that you cannot. For example, these graphics are very difficult to do in the in in Flowis or, or Data Wrapper. It's a next step, so it's more deeper in the, in the data visualization. You can do things like that. It's simple for a government. All the applications that we you can find in the night lab, and they're, they're, they are called storytelling tools, are very useful, like timelines, Map like timelines like this that we have seen before, like map box, like story maps. So you can create maps with Google Spreadsheet, real or unreal, like this one. So it doesn't matter. You are going to create a picture or create a map and then put items in this interactive item. So you can then link to Twitter, Facebook, video, captions. Another kind of graphic, you can take data wrapper and put it into this. Into this, so you can uh, create a huge interactive in, in a map. And all these tools are this day free. Not data wrapper, Floris and data wrapper, they have a, a part of free and uh, they are not very expensive. So, so we have used map, map, different application, for example. We, we have used map DS for the London for the for the Guernica travels. We have used Carto for the Brexit report, and we have used another application. It's called Odyssey. It's part of Carto, but it's Odyssey. Or, for example, cover a terrorist attack in in Paris, uh, updating every every single. Uh, uh, flash that we we had of the terrorist attack we were updating at at any time in a simple google spreadsheet and we we could publish it in the in the map so it works very well i mean none of these application crash when they could do it so this is a good point <laughs> you know carto is the most powerful application we have worked with or geolocation of huge data, huge amount of data. Honestly, we used to work with banks with this kind of applications, with uh, information, uh, uh, close information, and uh, they use it for analyze uh, how do we spend money, where and when. So they work very well with huge amount of data, but they are tiny complicated to, to use. These are this is more complicated than the other one we have seen. So maybe in the newsroom, for example, we don't use it to use them too much because you have you need technical skills to, to use. But I, I will share everything, all the links and everything I will share them. And also most of uh, There's another application already in the market that we are now checking. That is uh, map map for news. Now it's map creator. It's map for news. Very good for to locate to make location maps. When something occurs or something happens in some one point, it's very good to create the map. And also, it's good very good for print. You can export the, the SVG file and edit it in Illustrator. These are examples of map for news for print. So 
they are very easy to edit. I mean, uh, for someone who is comfortable working with Adobe package, you can edit a, a map for news map in, in minutes, very fast. Map box, you need technical skills. You need uh, uh, you need to know some kind of 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 developer knowledge. But it's very good to create maps that then you can work with these maps into, for example, Carto or into, for example, uh, map, for, map for news. It's very good. Collections. And if you have an IT development <laughs> department, use this kind of language, B3, yes, to create graphics. They are very robust. If you, are, if you work with a huge amount of data, this is the best way to create a graphic. But you need a technical knowledge. Yeah, things like this, clusters. Yeah. Yeah, the latest application is not, it is huge. It's, much, it's a very good application, it's Tableau, of course. But the problem with the newsroom is that it is very good for the internal dashboards in the, in the, in the companies to analyze how they produce, or how do we consume, or or link, uh, or create a dashboard of links between uh, with interactive uh, options. The problem is that how it causes sometimes problems when we try to publish it into a CMS, what we call CMS, with, a, with a, an editor for newsrooms. But it it, it doesn't mean that it's it is bad. Of course, no, it is not. It's a very, very good application, but for internal dashboard, in my opinion. Yeah, and Inforum is a toy <laughs> for social media graphics. <laughs> very useful when you have to do something very fast, very, very easy to use. The thing is, and some this is a key point I would like to share with you, is that don't focus on the application. These are the tools. There are more tools and, and I will share all the links with you in a document. But the thing is that think on the story before look for the tool. And remember that you can combine tools. I mean, focus on the graphic. Which kind of graphic, which kind of question do you want to answer? For example, in these cases, we have the location, statistic uh, graphic, uh, line charts, bar charts, and uh, uh, network charts. And then look for the application. You can combine some application to tell a story. And focus on one content, then focus on another content in another unit. And each of these units could use you, you can use different applications. Good. Well, these are uh, references. Uh, I will share the, the, the links of each one. Uh, they used to update very nice data visualizations to, to keep in mind how to get inspiration. And I don't know if we are running out of time, 48. <laughs> Just a tiny, I, I will go fast to, through this. This is a, a 20 years <laughs> in one minute, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's very fast. From print to web to social media. All the people that we have been working in graphics, we began doing, we have a servant uh, department as, uh, that would do graphics for different items, sports, international, social, economics, business. Uh, so what we used to do is, first of all, we used to work in black and white to explain things. Breaking news, wow, um, explanations, explain things that no one could I remember, for example, the, the Concord crash or the, the Chechenia war, things that no one could see. We had to explain them or terrorist attack with black and white drawings and diagrams. Okay. From there, we went to color. <laughs> we went to explain things in color uh, with print, with good quality in print, with uh, doing, uh, but we used to use the same applications to do it. Then we moved to internet, to the, to the old internet, where we say, okay, we can do animations. Animation is information. 
animation is information and also animation is best information at the same time so we must be careful with animation this is a 99 animation 200 kilobytes we have to say please wait it takes a long time to download it but we, we move from black and white to color from color to animation from animation to interactivity when we had the, to do all the graphics of the 11th of September, we began to, we, we create interfaces. Uh, now they seem so old, but it, they were very well at, the, at this time. So we create interaction. Then we have to create more interaction in XML file when we move from, from text or desktop to laptops. So at, after that, we went to a nice a knife uh, interface so we we were we did very complex graphics and now we had to do very simple graphics make very tiny interactions and we had to focus also as well in graphic for social media so we have to do print we have to do internet we have to do tablets and mobile we have to do uh, graphics in a, in a social media video animations as well we have to create uh, it's a simple animation we did last year, last day to create the recession curves and explain how the depression is or the or the kind of well, recovery after the coronavirus it's a social media video the thing is every single every graphic works better in a in a we have to choose which kind of graphic is going to be published in which kind of device. A static graphic is going to work very well in print or it's going to work very well to share in mobiles. But the desktop and the laptop ask for an interactive. Or we are going to work with for an animation, tiny animation on website and on mobile, but it could be May, uh, we could add more content for this animation if we're going to consume that in, in, in laptop. So depending on the mobile and depending on the, on, on, the, on the publishing device, we should select the kind of graphic. But for us, it is always the same graphic. I mean, I mean I'm going to finish because we would like to, to go fast. We have to, to work on graphic that work in every single platform even print, but for us, uh, the graphic is the same. So it, it, we have tiny changes or we have, we modify it for the, for the publishing for them to make sure that they're going to be consumed in a correct way. And yeah, I think I'm on time. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you, Rafa. It was truly inspiring. You gave us lots of uh, beautiful examples on how to bring data to life and how to pass on our message and create a story with our data. We have several questions. I will start from the beginning. Um, Miguel Ruiz is asking about the role of data analysts. He's asking uh, if you need sometimes to collaborate with scientists to make sense of data or to have a scientific approach to data? Yeah. We don't have in, in, in news, now for example, in newsrooms, we don't have the, the, the data scientist uh, role or skills. They are coming now, for example, in Spain, we have El País uh, with Daniele Grasso, with Kiko Llaneras, Daniele Grasso, and Diario.es, and a newspaper with data scientists working on the data and the data before create the story. So they are very necessary. And this is a, a, a skill or a, or a, or a professional uh, role that we didn't have a few years ago. And they are, but in, in since five years, maybe, uh, there's a presence of data analyst, uh, data uh, specialist in the newsroom working to check the data and to provide the, the, the story. Yeah, so that, that's it's very, very necessary. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, another question uh, from Declan is about bad graphics. By bad graphics, do you mean 
badly designed or with bad data? I mean both. Okay. <laughs> I mean both. <laughs> that covers it. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I mean, when, when we talk about bad graphics, um, um, I, I mean, if, if a graphic, for example, lies in the data, or they have a, a manipula manipulated the scale, right? We are going to, to have uh, a feedback that probably they are going to kill our brand in Twitter. <laughs> so it's very easy to create a, 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 well, a, a key point in, in inflection in, a, in Twitter and social media when we are uh, doing a bad graphic with a different scale. And, and yeah, bad graphic is manipulated graphic but graphic is a graphic that doesn't, it's not the correct graphic to show a, a, a relationship or to show to a relation or to show a, a distribution. And bad graphic is, uh, yeah, I mean, both wrong data, manipulated scales, and nothing, both. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, Maria is asking about the tools you mentioned. Are they? Yeah. Um, are there free editions or do they all come with a, a paying license or both? Most of them want to make money and most of them have uh, uh, a very a, a part that is free and then when you ask for more you have to pay. <laughs> but tools like for example data wrapper or tools like Flourish or uh, raw graphics now is changing to for, uh, for changing now they're asking for money uh, they are not very expensive for an organization honestly they're not if, if a newspaper can afford it <laughs> I think they're not expensive <laughs> <laughs> okay um, then we have a question about which apps for maps but this will be covered with the slides and with all the links that you will provide uh, mm -hmm. Ilse was making a comment about um, some corporate tools that we also have internally in the commission web tools yes, yes. We, we will have them we have them on our community of practice um there is another question about um could you recommend to for scientists who are generating data to develop their skills in data visualization or could you recommend graphic designer working with the scientists to develop skills for data visualization? Honestly, I know I have to answer one of the options, <laughs> but both options are very good at the same time. In my, I mean, what I mean, in my experience, when we, for example, the newsroom didn't know nothing about data a few years ago and we teach them about data and we make seminars and training about applications to do graphics and we provide them with tools to them to do them and today today not all of not all of the journalists used to do their own graphics but they know how to ask for the data it's good so a data scientist that knows something about data visualization, uh, maybe probably they will prepare the data better for users. So probably we will earn time and, and feedbacks and, and time we spend in feedbacks or wrong uh, columns, something like that, or formats. And at the same time, the designers know something about data scientists. They will know which kind of graphics who uh, works better with the, with the data they, they already have. So I think it's a knowledge that they, it should be in, in, the, in both ways. Okay, thank you. And this one is very relevant for us working in the EU institutions. How could you see the journalistic approach adapted to our institutional setting? What functions should be internal and what could be externalized, for example? We are aware that you may not be familiar with our institutional 
context and you know, environment, but. Uh, but well, uh, what I have seen of the, of the website with the data, with how you manage all the data. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, how we used to work in the, in the newsrooms is like we work for our short time, mid time, and long time projects, which means we work for breaking news, we work for special events in mid terms. And we were for long projects in long terms. And as soon as we can have access in this, uh, I don't know how to say, in these packages, I mean, if we are talking about coronavirus today, I need the, to have access to the data today about the coronavirus. But we are preparing for the uh, back to work daily normally or was normally it's not going to be normal but for the back to work uh, period maybe if I, I i will have to have access to this kind of data for the back to work i don't know if i explain myself if as, as soon as it provides the information or the source provides the data Yes. with the same timing we are asking for it that could be very useful that's mm -hmm. a point and also if we are looking for the data but also if we have a reference of the visualization that could work with this data that make us earn time that we we don't used to have i mean if i go I, i'm coming for uh to update a uh, 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 data and then coming to the source and the source uh, says, okay, it's going to work very well with a line chart in logarithmic scale, for example. I will probably do a logarithm scale. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, these kind of things. The, the same time, and as, uh, a suggestion of which kind of graphic could you use to have. Thank you very much. And then we have, I would say, a quote by Claudio. It's not a question. And I find it very inspiring. He is saying, um, give a journalist a PDF and <laughs> him for a day. Teach a journalist how to use data and you will feed him for a lifetime. Um, do you agree? <laughs> have you, have you I, experienced this? I honestly agree. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, because the the problem with the with the with the PDF file is that when they used to ask for data or for information and, and the source give them the PDF file, they used to scan it in a scan and bring it to the graphic department and say sort it. <laughs> as soon as we leave that. <laughs> everything will be okay. This is really very, very relevant to us and our, um, let's say, uh, campaign to really go for format that are interoperable. So I really am up about the format of the data. And I think with that, um, I would like to thank you, uh, Rafael, on behalf of the Publications Office. I would like to thank um, everyone joining in for this webinar. And I wish you all a great weekend. The slides will be on YouTube and they will be disseminated to the participants. Thank you very much and have a great day.